In December 1998, when the shuttle Columbia takes off, Colonel Eileen Collins will take one big step forward for women and one giant leap for humanity. Mr. President, Mrs. Clinton, and Administrator Golden, I just can't tell you how much of an honor it is for me to be here today. And I'm just, I'm just so excited about this opportunity that I have to command a space shuttle flight. And I want to tell you that uh, since I was a child, I've, I've dreamed about space. I've admired pilots, astronauts, and I've admired explorers of all kinds. And it was only a dream of mine that I would someday be one of them and have these kinds of opportunities. Yes, yes. I'm, that. I'm getting my facts straight. <laughs> Forty years ago, Life magazine introduced America's first astronauts to the world, noting that the seven Mercury astronauts were picked from, quote, the same general mold. They were all military pilots. They were all in their 30s. They all had crew cuts. <laughs> they were all men. And they really were all true American heroes. But heroes come in every size and shape and gender. Today, we celebrate the falling away of another barrier in America's quest to conquer the frontiers of space and also to advance the cause of equality. I'm proud to be here to congratulate Colonel Eileen Collins on becoming the first woman to command a space shuttle mission. She may not fit the exact mold of 40 years ago, but she clearly embodies the essential qualities of all our astronauts then and now. The bold, restless, pioneering spirit that have made our nation great. And as we've already heard, the story of her life is a story of challenges set and challenges met. That is also the story of our space program. When it comes to exploring space and the unknown, the word impossible is not in our vocabulary. 